Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be giving you an overview of the new font fallback support that was added in the latest release of Text Mesh Pro. So let's take a look at how this feature works. So I'm going to select the Text Mesh Pro object and actually wipe out the text and I'm going to switch to a different font asset that only contains a few characters. So I'm switching to this Arial Numerical SDF font asset which only contains numbers. So what happens when I type ABC or characters? Well, as you can see, those are missing from the font asset. And now we get these square boxes to visually indicate that those characters are missing. Now in the latest release of Text Mesh Pro, the old red X that used to show up for missing glyphs has now been replaced by these squares. I know some of you used to hate the red X and others used to love it. Well, now it's, the, it's been replaced by the square. So how would we handle this situation with the font fallback system or how would it handle it? Well, let's go find our Text Mesh Pro TMP settings file, which is right here. And the Text Mesh Pro settings file was added about three releases ago and allows you to define the default behavior of newly created objects. So for, ex uh, for example, when you create a new text object, what default font asset will it use? So in this case, we have Arial SDF assigned, but you could assign any other font. What font fallbacks will it look through when it's looking for missing characters? This is where we define that list. Here we can set some of the default properties of the text objects when they're created, what sprite asset will it use by default, and what style sheet will be used by default. So right now we want to focus on the font fallback. So let's assign a different font as a fallback that we know has characters in it, right? So I could actually go here and assign Arial SDF, uh, but just for fun to deviate from my demo, I'm going to assign the impact font asset. Okay, now nothing happened just because I didn't hook up that once you assign this, I then force a refresh of the text object. So I'm going to manually refresh the text object here. But as you can see, now although we're using Arial, it's looking through the list of fallback and it picked up the ABC from the impact font. Now in this case, that's not what I wanted. It kind of looked kind of goofy. So I'm going to go back and replace this by Arial SDF just to keep it to the same font type for the example and type my ABC again and now as you can see we've got the ABC from Arial SDF. Now what if I wanted to use a Greek letter like Omega? Well I can use the UTF-16-0389 and again I guess this Greek letter is not contained in this first font asset, it's not in this second font asset so let's go assign a different one so I'm going to add one to the list and I've already created an Arial Greek SDF and I guess the next demo I'm going to do is let's add uh, font awesome in there so we can access some icons with our text objects so again manually forcing a refresh and this is something I'll, I'll fix in the next update so it does that automatically but now we can see our Omega character shows up and now let's go use the UTF-32 sequence, F179, and now we have an icon coming out from the Font Awesome library. So in terms of Text Mesh Pro and its handling of this, this is basically using the multi-font uh, system, and as far as the layout and rich text tag usage is concerned, this behaves as if it was just a single font, so word wrapping, everything behaves the way you would expect it. In terms of the ramification of using the fallback system, just like the multi-font system, for every additional material that you use, uh, we have to create a sub-object that uses that material. So in this case, in the case of this object, we're getting four draw calls because we're using four different materials. Now if I was to duplicate this object, uh, right now we're using the mesh renderer, these would batch uh, with each other. So although we have more than four materials, well, we still have four materials, but although there's more in the scene, they would batch together, so we'd still be getting four draw calls. Now when you're using the canvas system, the batching is different because it's based on the canvas, the scene uh, order and the hierarchy, uh, and whether or not the objects overlap each other, so you're going to get different results. But for the most part, as long as your text doesn't overlap, the batching will occur as you would expect it to occur. 
Now, a side note about draw calls, back in the old days of the iPhone 3 and 3GS, I mean, every single draw call mattered. They're still important, but as devices have gotten much faster, uh, if you were to benchmark a scene with, you know, make sure all things are equal, but if you benchmark the scene with one draw call or 20 draw calls, you wouldn't necessarily see any difference. Now, there certainly is a difference between a scene that has one draw call versus 100 versus 1,000, but whether your text object has one, two, three, or four draw calls, or even a dozen, it's not like you're going to see that much of a performance difference anywhere. Um, devices are more impacted now by fill rate, and basically there, a lot of them are CPU bound now based on all the stuff that you're doing with AI and all these different things. So, um, so I'm saying draw calls are not as important as they used to be. They're still important. You should still be mindful of that in the sense that don't go create font assets that only contain digits and then just lowercase, just uppercase, uppercase and, and, and purposefully sort of drive their draw call count up, right? Still be efficient, but in the end, uh, this font fallback system will give you the flexibility that you need, and let's discuss that. So up until now, you were sort of limited to trying to include as many characters as you could in your font assets. And for most, you know, languages or Latin-based languages, which have a limited number of characters, you know, that was fine because you can certainly fit, you know, most Latin-based languages in a single font asset. But when you got to languages like Chinese, Japanese, or Korean, where their character sets are much larger, then you ran into the issue of the texture size limitation, you know, on mobile devices, where now you couldn't include all the characters that you would want. And this is where the multi-font and font fallback system uh, will become handy, because it allows you to break away from that limitation, because now you can uh, sort of spread your characters through as many font assets as you want to accommodate your needs. And this will give you, you know, the ultimate flexibility. So for example, um, what's kind of nice is here I'm using different font assets uh, for Arial, but the sampling point size, like if I go to my font assets and I select Arial SDF, we can see that Arial SDF was sampled at 86 point size and it contains, you know, several hundred characters, whereas this numerical version that I was using here was sampled at 132 point size and it probably contains only like 30 or 40 characters. And yet, you know, on screen they're rendered at the same proportional size. The Greek set, for example, uh, uses a completely different point size and contains fewer characters and again they all blend in so with the font fallback system and the ability that you have to adjust the scale, the baseline, the line height, the ascender, the sender, uh, which when you're sticking to the same font family, you're not really going to need to play with. But if you're trying to, uh, in the case of other languages, have a fallback that's a different font than the main font, you'll still be able to kind of normalize those so that they blend in with each other. So the way that I would use this flexibility in this feature is for most Latin-based languages, I would still generate a single font asset that contains all the major characters that I'm going to use. And then I might break, you know, symbols if I go back to my TMP settings file. So if I go back to my TMP setting files, I might break out, you know, much less frequently used characters like the, the Latin base, you know, uh, tier three type characters, like some weird symbols that are never used or or musical notes or something. I might break those up in different font assets. But for the most part, for Latin languages, I would try to combine all of those into a single font asset. But when it comes to Chinese, for example, or some of those other languages, I would basically generate a font asset that is below the texture size limitation for mobile. And I would include, for example, all the most frequently used characters in that one. And then I would generate another font asset that contains the commonly used characters, and then so on and so forth. If you look at the Chinese language, I think uh, you cover 99.7% of all their characters, and it's about 8,000 characters. And splitting that up in three or four font assets is pretty easy, especially given the fact that they don't have to have the same texture size, the same sampling size, so it gives you the most most flexibility too, in the sense that you can sample the mostly 
com uh, frequently used characters at a higher sampling point size than the characters that will seldomly be encountered. So again, lots of flexibility there in terms of how you generate the sampling, the quality, and how you organize all of that. So in the end, you know, this is a new feature. We're going to have to see how everybody gets to use it. And over time, we'll develop some best practices. Um, I, I think the key thing is finding that nice balance between being able to include all the characters that you want in reasonably sized uh, sort of atlases uh, and kind of minimizing the number of draw calls that you're going to get. Because like I said earlier, you know, you don't want to suddenly break up your font assets where you have your lowercase, uppercase, and, and they're all in separate different things, right? On desktop, by the way, whether you have 100 or 1,000 draw calls on most desktop machines these days, you wouldn't even see any difference anyway. But it not because you don't see a difference. It's not a reason to do it. So we'll have to see how this shapes up. Um, this is uh, the overview of this new font fallback system. Um, I think it's going to be pretty cool to be able to use icons and mix all these different things together. And I look forward to uh, your feedback and seeing what everybody's going to do with this. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to post. Thanks.